Welcome to Evening Prayer from the Parish of St. Leonard's Clapthorn. It's Good Friday. Evening Prayer today will differ from the usual act of worship, having at its heart a long passage from John's Gospel. To put that reading in context, you might like to read first chapter 18, which depicts Jesus' arrest, Peter's denial, Jesus' interrogation by Caiaphas, and Pilate's initial finding of acquittal. You might also like to see the notes I've posted on the Facebook page. John the Evangelist is the master of irony and its cousin Paradox, both of which features of this account. Subtler, richer and more multi-layered than unrelieved desolation. Wrongly convicted, mocked, tortured and executed. Jesus is nonetheless in sovereign control, really a king, but one whose kingdom is not of this world. As John has repeatedly prefigured, the hour of Jesus' death is also that of his glorification. The crucifixion is also a coronation. Evening Prayer Today, he who hung the earth upon the waters is hung upon the cross. He who is king of the angels is arrayed in a crown of thorns. He who wraps the heaven in clouds is wrapped in the purple of mockery. He who in Jordan set Adam free receives blows on his face. The bridegroom of the church is transfixed with nails. The son of the virgin is pierced with a spear. We venerate thy passion, O Christ. Show us also thy glorious resurrection. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus you our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The lesson is from the Gospel according to St John, chapter 19, first reading, verses 1 to 25. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe, 
they kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Don't you know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus, Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now, it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Don't write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will get it. This was to fulfil what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. That's what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. The Langdomitis, the Song of Simeon. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Verses 26 to 42. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, 
Here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I'm thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews didn't want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who'd been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified, so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, They will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who at first had come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Here endeth the lesson. The Collect for Good Friday Almighty God, we beseech thee graciously to behold this thy family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was contented to be betrayed, and given up into the hands of wicked men, and to suffer death upon the cross, who now liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before thee for all estates of men in thy holy Church, that every member of the same in his vocation and ministry may truly and godly serve thee, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In sorrow, in penitence, and in thanksgiving for the divine sacrifice, let us pray. Give to your church grace to enter deeply into the mystery of this day. As we stand before the cross of Jesus Christ, make us all worthy to take that cross as the sign of our faith. Have mercy on the world that goes its way ignorant or forgetful of Christ's love. As Jesus cared for his mother and his friend, even in the hour of his death, let nothing diminish our concern for one another. May Christ's saving love come into our homes. Look with compassion on all who are smitten by suffering. Knowing the sufferings of Christ, may they find him with them. We pray for all whose earthly lives have ended. May they rest in peace 
and be raised in glory. Now and at all times we offer our prayers through Jesus Christ, crucified for us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The Grace The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.